Welcome to my July 31st video update. So I'm, I'm finally ready to share some thoughts on using the Zhiyong Crane M with the variety of cameras that I'll typically use it with. And those are the, the, the Panasonic GM5, the little P GM5 camera I've shown you, my iPhone 7 Plus, my Nextbit Robin Android phone, and finally, my little Yi action camera. Uh, and I've determined the other cameras that will work with it very well. I mean, I can use some of the OMD cameras, but they're a little bit heavier. And so those are the cameras, the ones I just listed are the ones that I expect to really use it with the most. And, and so what I've um, decided to do, however, is that because this is a, uh, not a review, but a little bit more in-depth discussion of using each of these cameras with examples of footage of them, I decided to make a, an episode in my Photography and Technology Tools series, because that's what I created that series for, to talk about equipment, talk about equipment related to photography and, and technology equipment and software. And so if, you take a, if you're interested in this topic, using a small camera like this, then I encourage you to take a look at episode 34 in phot Photography and Technology Tools. I'll put a link to it above and I'll put one in the description as well. So what I want to do today though is to talk a little bit more about this little Panasonic GM5 camera. And the reason I want to do that, because it does border on something a little bit more in depth than what I would normally do in this video updates, but I want to encourage you if you're considering a smaller camera as I did, that a camera like this, I'm not promoting this particular this brand or model, but there are lots of small cameras that fill this, this, this void of something between a full-size camera and a smartphone camera. And I just want to encourage you to consider it if you're thinking about it. In fact, what I'm recording on right now is a GM5, so it's also good for video. The reason I got into these small cameras is about five years ago I was shooting with Canon 60D and I had, that uh, was really the first time I got an iPhone and it was an iPhone 5 and I found I was using the iPhone an awful lot and of course you don't carry the 60D with you everywhere you go, or I didn't, and uh, I had quite, I mean I'd been a Canon shooter for a while, I had a lot of lenses and I really loved that camera and the lenses that I had for it, but um, I wanted something between the 60D and the iPhone 5, or I wanted a camera that would take shots that were almost as good, if not as good as the 60D, and yet it was small enough that I could still put it in my pocket like I could my cell phone. So I looked around, I wanted to stay with Canon, I looked at the G series of, of cameras, but the cheapest one, because the criteria I had was I wanted to be able to shoot in manual, I wanted to have the ability to put an external flash on, because at the time I was doing some things with flash, and if it had interchangeable lenses, that would be nice, but you know, the G-series cameras didn't have that. But what I found was that the camera that I was looking at was almost was $600 or thereabouts, if I recall correctly, but more money than I wanted to spend. So I started looking around a little bit more, and that's when I discovered the Olympus and Panasonic Micro Four Thirds phenomenon. So I landed on the Pen EPL3 from Olympus, and I think I paid $250 for it, so that was perfect was exactly what I wanted. It was small, even with its kit lens of 12 to 42 millimeters. It fit in my pocket, not necessarily in a shorts pocket, but it would fit in the pockets. And I was happy. And then I started looking, well, I want to upgrade this a little bit. So then the EPL5 came out. There is no four because the number four is taboo in, in, in Japan. And um, so I bought the EPL5, got rid of, or sold the EPL3. That's when I really started learning about selling stuff. And I still have my Canon 60D, I still use it a lot, but I had become really enamored with the, with the Micro Four Third format and was sort of lusting after the uh, OMD EM1, which was the flagship and it was new, at, relatively new at that time. And then they came out with the EM10. There was no EM5 yet, I don't think. And, or maybe they did have the EM5 Mark I, then they came out with the EM10, 
and the M10 was in a price range that I could afford, so I sold the EPL5 and I bought the, EM, the OMD EM10. So I was kind of locked in here now with the Olympus cameras. And then I started lusting after the EM1 because I wanted a better grip. I bit the bullet, sold my Canon 60D to a young lady who used it very profitably to start her own little business. And I sold a lot of the lens, all, all the lenses that I had. It killed me, but I did it. And with that money, I then bought an EM1 with a pro lens, the, the 12 to 40. So that got me into this whole small camera range, but I still wasn't terribly happy. I, you know, the, the EM1 was small compared to the Canon 60D, but it still wasn't pocketable really. So I went back on my search and that's when I discovered the GM5. And the GM5 is, is tiny. The, um, you know, for handling, it, it is very slim. And with the uh, body cap lenses I've shown you, it, it really is a very small profile and easily fits in a pocket. But even with this 20 millimeter, which is what I used to shoot that first part of this uh, episode, it's still pocketable and, and a small profile. I was happy when I got this camera. What I wanted to talk about today was some of the features in this fully featured camera for such a small package. You know, if you go along the top, it's got the typical mode dial with the PASM and then some settings or modes rather that there's a video mode. And uh, there are other mode, auto modes and uh, scene modes and so on. So the typical kind of uh, uh, built in automatic modes. Then next, that's the shutter button with the on-off switch underneath it and the uh, uh, automatic focusing, continuous focusing and manual focusing switch in the, 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 third, the second little dial that's up there. And on the back, then the one feature that I don't really like a lot is this dial that you have to use to change uh, shutter speed and aperture. And by default, if I'm in manual mode and I turn that dial, then it will change the shutter speed. In order to change the aperture, I had to press that dial in, which is a bit of a challenge if I don't have a good fingernail. And so, uh, but I've gotten used to it and it's not so bad. So I push that in, then I can change the, the aperture. Uh, next to that, say preview the button so that you can look at the videos and, and uh, images that you've shot and a Wi-Fi button and then a function button. Uh, I use the Wi-Fi quite a bit. The Wi-Fi is really very handy because by, you know, there's an accompanying app that works on uh, Android and iOS. So I'll have that on, on my, uh, as I did earlier, on my old iPad mini and launch Wi-Fi. And then I was able to control the GM5 as I stood here, I was able to control it from my uh, iPad mini. But the second thing you can do with this remote Wi-Fi connection is transfer images, obviously, and videos. You can transfer videos. You can't transfer raw files, but you can transfer JPEGs. So I always shoot in raw plus JPEG, and I'm able to get those JPEGs across to my iPad Pro, typically is what I copy them to. So Wi-Fi is really a nice feature on this, as is common on most new cameras these days. So in, in video mode, it will shoot in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And it does not have a mic port, so you can't plug an external mic. So the mic I have on right now is, is on a cable is being plugged into my iPhone 7 Plus. And hopefully you're not getting the echoey sound that would normally happen in this room because it's a very, it's a wooden floor room with wooden furniture and so it doesn't muffle sound very much. And here's a sample of audio that was recorded from the GM5 during that first segment. So take a listen to this. Welcome to my July 31st video update. So I'm, I'm finally pretty accurate, huh? And um, the same would be true with the iPhone. In fact, I did this, this is the second time I'm going through this. I'd forgotten to plug in the extension cord, which was plugged into the iPhone when I went through this whole thing and actually had finished it and discovered it. all I had was echoey sound on the iPhone 7. But as I put this GM5, and again, one of the reasons I like it, it fits nicely on the uh, Crane M. And as I've been doing some test footage with, with the GM5 on the Crane M and walking around, I'm not very far from the camera and the audio that's picked up there is pretty decent, really. It's not bad. Here's a sample of, of the audio that was picked up by the camera when the camera was fairly close to my mouth. Okay, another test with the 
uh, GM5 and 20 millimeter lens on the Crane M. Acceptable. So what I did before the front part of this, this episode was I had this microphone plugged into my Olympus LSP4 recorder and this synchronized the, the audio and the video in post. Okay, then other thing is this little camera does have a viewfinder. You know, it's, uh, and it's small. It's usable though, although I do find myself using most of the time just the back screen the LCD, as opposed to the viewfinder. Then, of course, it has a flash mount. So I can plug in my i40 flash, which is not a very big, large flash, and on this camera, doesn't overpower, as far as size goes, the camera. And it does come with a pop-in flash, which works rather well. I haven't used it very much, but it is uh, adjustable to some degree, so you can do some bounce with it. But otherwise, it provides some fill flash. It's useful. But what it's really useful for is with that little pop-in flash plugged in here, I can have the i40 off camera and control the i40 from the, the pop-in flash for the GM5. All in all, a lot of cool features in a very small, small package. So, as I've said, I think before, kind of, I think it's kind of a foregone conclusion. This is the camera I'm taking with me on our trip to Europe, and uh, I'm not gonna, and I'm not gonna look back. I'm not gonna worry because I know I can do everything I need to do and want to do with this and my iPhone, of course. Thank you very much for checking in, and don't forget to take a look at episode 34 of Photography and Technology Tools if you're interested in my experiences with the Crane M. So I'll see you next week. Goodbye.